Welcome to The Third Side with your host, John and Stacey Edwards from thirdsideparanormal.com. Welcome to the third side. I'm your host, John Edwards, and joined as always by my lovely wife, Stacy. Hello. And I will go ahead and apologize and point out the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Um, Stacy is having a little uh, tooth problem, <laughs> and there is a slight, see? See? slight swelling. I just want I just want to think it's all Ike and Tina Turner or something, you know? Yes. Well, you're gonna have to do that twice because we're taping two shows today. No, we're not. <laughs> It was like a, a prolonged problem <laughs> that we were trying to get medically assist on. I see. Medically assist. Medical, yes. There should be something at the end of that, shouldn't there? Medical assistance. Anyway, we have a groovy show today, and I'm saying that for groovy. our our producer slash director slash mastermind, Justin, who uh, says groovy quite often. I can't tell if groovy's like his, I'm not really interested, move along, mm-hmm. or if it's actually his, I'm really excited. Maybe but he just doesn't like to send, like, K at the end of a message. I'm really glad he doesn't, doesn't like to put K. <laughs> I hate um, that. I do, too. Anyway, Katie Boyd is our guest today. Mm-hmm. Katie Boyd is a demonologist, uh, cult scientist, slash crimes expert. Um, mm-hmm. She does some really cool stuff, some wicked cool stuff. <laughs> and uh, she's also from uh, up in your family's neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, she's from uh, New Hampshire. And... Katie is into some interesting things because she is a demonologist, but not your traditional demonologist. Um, she's not really Catholic based or uh, or church based for that matter. Well, I think she actually has a working knowledge of a lot of different. And that's the cool thing religions. about her. She mm-hmm. has a working knowledge of just about everything um, as far as you would come into with the occult and demonology. Mm-hmm. But right. she gets brought in on a lot of crimes. Um, gruesome and terrible crimes um, that they're wanting to know if there's some occult aspect to the crimes Um, and uh, she's very interesting to talk to so you're in for a treat today Mm -hmm. Um, katieboyd.net is her address we'll get more of that later a little bit of name dropping on uh, all that but uh, Katie is an author and she is spectacular so I think you're going to really like the show today if you're into anything come on you're into that kind of stuff who's not into that kind of stuff (laughs) Not us. I mean, no, yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, but the thing I like about Katie, mm-hmm. just to go ahead and say it now, right? She is she studies more than just the black and white. Right. She studies the gray. You know, she studies uh, more than just this certain religion's mm-hmm. view of what a demon is or a non-human entity. Right. You know, she she knows the names. She does the research. Well, and she, she looks at the book. she looks at it not just from a paranormal point of view right it's like the whole point of view paranormal medical because she does have a medical background right and she actually has the police background so you know she gets that every angle aspect exactly exactly so. all right as far as we're concerned mm-hmm. then you know because hey we got to talk about ourselves a little bit that's if how we don't who will right well I mean, everybody does right <laughs> by now you should be facebook.com slash third side and you know we update it can I mean, come on, we update it like every few seconds. I probably just got updated when I said that uh, by, one of, by one of the spirits here at this active location. Um, but facebook.com slash third side at three side pair. That's the number three is our Twitter. Mm-hmm. And third side paranormal all written out dot com 
is the website. Yes. This lovely young lady over here uh, takes care of all that. I like your hair, by the way. Thank you. For those Thank of you. you listening on iTunes or various other forms of media, um, you can't see Stacy's hair, so you need to go look up on YouTube. YouTube. Just search the third side and you'll be able to see this because it's really amazing. It's October. I was trying to do the Halloween. I, I, I'm loving owl it. earrings. Hey, you know, you know what? Thing. If we could rewrite uh, the most wonderful time of the year, or isn't that, not, is that how it says? I don't know. Hey, anyway, I don't listen to Christmas music that much. <laughs> this is Halloween my, is John's Christmas. Oh, yeah. Uh, Halloween is my Christmas. October is my favorite month. And, um, uh, the Stacy was born in October, so it's given some great things to me, and it's a really awesome month. Uh, so we're going to have fun shows all month long, mm -hmm. and culminating in our Halloween special, which will be released on Halloween, and um, will be special. <laughs> I don't think they ever would have figured that out. They, they. I mean, come on, you know, we have a great show for you today. Stick around. Uh, you know, invite some friends. Don't just watch this. Don't just keep the third side to yourself. All right. We've been noticing things growing. Mm -hmm. um, this past week, we had a tremendous amount of growth. But, you know, hey, share this. Just, just share it. Just hit the share button and say, these guys are crazy or these guys are kooky or whatever. Uh, but get it out there. You know, we're doing a real grassroots thing here and trying to really build this and make something make something cool make something that's long lasting and we'll keep bringing these shows to you each and every week and hopefully you're loving it uh, we're having fun doing it so it's about that time for some news you didn't do the chin thing there you go it's hard for us here to believe what we're reporting to you but it does seem to be a fact Okay, time for some news. You ready for our first story? I'm always ready. This is actually kind of an update for a story that we did on the previous show, or maybe two shows ago. Don't remember exactly. A previous show? <laughs> no, it's either the one before this or the one before that. Anyway, it's been recently. Uh, it's the kind of like the way we name our houses. Exactly. The last, last, no, last, no, 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 no the old, old, old the house. The old, old, old house? Yeah. yeah There's too many olds years. now. Yeah, we move a lot. Anyway, this is the story about the Georgia Guidestones. Do you remember we talked about the Georgia Guidestones? It got the update. It had the little remember. block in there. And, you know, we were like, it looks really professional. You know, it didn't look like a hoax, whatever. So there's a video now that came out. And actually, I found this video probably before. It was the last show we talked about this because it's probably going to, I saw this probably before that show even airs. So <laughs> as funny as that is. Um, the guy that takes care of the Georgia Guidestones, right. he took the block out. So it didn't belong there. You know, someone had just put it there. Nobody knows who or why. But there's a YouTube video of some people that were there. And they saw him. He had a ladder. He climbed up there. And he pulled the block out. And there were other things no, carved what? on it. What? Yeah. It didn't really? just have the 20, 2014. Like one side, the it was a block. And on one face of the cube was a 20. And on the other face of the cube was a 14, 14. And that's what you could see. Right. But when he pulled it out and brought it down, they were showing it. And it actually had other numbers and letters and stuff on it. Do we know what those were? Yes. It says, it actually shows it on the video. Um, all around the sides, there was a 16, a 20, a 14, and an 8. And then on the top of the cube, which, I mean, in the video, there was MM. And then on the bottom, it was JAM. So. Wow. Odd inscriptions and of course nobody has any idea what it means i can't wait to hear or read what people's theories are what they come up with if they can make any sense out of it i mean maybe it's just nonsense maybe it doesn't mean anything and they're just somebody's just trying yeah, to screw everything with means something i mean mm -hmm. that's that's really cool i wonder if the gardener was like you know a fitter, fitter, do you know what he did though he's he is kind of an older guy. Uh, there was a bunch of people there watching, and you know that that one person was filming him take it down. He broke it up with a hammer and gave everybody a piece of it. No. Yes, everybody that was actually there got a piece, and the person filming, I think, actually had a piece with the twenty on it. And oh they were my like, God. Look, this is so cool. They probably so, took him to three separate corners of the globe. I thought that was pretty we'll awesome. We'll have to. But what I think, I mean, really unusual is obviously that. I mean, this is all I've seen on this. Just this one video. Right. Like nobody's speculated who did it you know the guy that went up there and took it down didn't 
I mean, it's not like he was ranting and raving and, you know, oh, you stupid kids or anything. I mean, they just took it down, broke it up, and that was the end of it and nothing else. I would like to talk to the guy who went and took it down. You said the gardener or whatever. The caretaker. And I guess the, the guy that takes care of the area. The or caretaker. Whatever. <laughs> and find out, you know, who pays his salary. Yeah, I don't think you're going to find that out. But yeah, but I mean, we can waterboard him. But anyway, so really curious about this little mysterious code. Anybody has any ideas? If you think you know what this means, please send me a message and tell me because I have no idea. It's just numbers to yeah, me. It's interesting. I'm glad they uh, figured it out. But it, it makes me think that now that the 2014 isn't 2014. It's not. It's part of this other, you know, code I don't know. Or whatever. I, I, the code, we got to get our best, you know, code breakers out there. And I know you're out there, code breakers, <laughs> especially those of you at the military that like to keep up with my doings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, break this code. What's going on there if you didn't write it in the first place? But moving on. Moving on. Anyway, I just thought that was a really interesting little update, and I'm going to be interested in seeing, you know, what people think that's about. So um, I'm going to mention another story, and this is one that um, I think you had shared or saw or took, took my attention to, and um, it's not something I had ever really heard about, and I don't know if anybody else ever saw this story kind of making the rounds, but it's the one about the hieroglyphics in Australia. Yes. Yes. Um, they're called the Gosford Glyphs. Um, and I think they were found, I don't actually have the story on it because I was actually going to talk about why they're not real instead of the whole history of it. Um, because I think it's really interesting because I really had to dig for this story, but, um, they were found back in the seventies, I think a long time ago. And people have just been fascinated with them, right. which obviously, and they look Egyptian. Everybody says they look kind of Egyptian. So I found, I was looking into it and I found this story, um, where they were talking about this guy had been studying them and he was talking about the different markings. Apparently they're not all Egyptian. There's some that look, you know, that could be classified Phoenician. There's some that could be classified as, you know, other things. Right. And so it was just this huge mystery. What on earth are these things? And so down near the bottom, there was this article where someone had interviewed a ranger with the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And, and I mean, I'm just taking this at face value, you know. What, From Australia. He's National Parks and Wildlife in Australia. Yes, yes. I bet that guy has to get paid well. Yeah, he uh, takes his life in his own hands. Every, going every out second. The every park. second. We make no bones hey, about look, that. look, there's a bunny. <laughs> I mean, it's freaking Australia. It's not, it's not. They don't have bunnies in Australia. They have, you know, super deadly like I talked viper about before, rabbits or something. Bunnies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they shoot fire out their butt. <laughs> it's Australia is a crazy place and this week oddly enough until you continue mm -hmm. the uh, we've had a lot of people like you know join us uh, mm -hmm. from Australia mm -hmm. you know good mates and um, I'd like to say that wasn't that bad no I can that was get, not bad I can do that one pretty you good can do that one all right, all right. it's just really kind of close to English anyway it's close um, to English except they sent all their prisoners there and <laughs> Anyway, anyway. Uh, so this Neil Martin, he claims that he actually saw the guy responsible for carving the glyphs. And his story is that in 1984, so I guess it was in 84, not in the 70s. I was wrong. I apologize. I didn't have the dates in front of me. Music. Um, yeah, give me the wah, wah, wah. Anyway, uh, he said he was in the area helping to put out a fire. And as he came around the hill there where the glyphs are, that he could hear a noise like someone chipping stone. And that he walked over and he said he found an old Yugoslavian man chipping at the stone with, and he actually gives the name of the chisel, a Sidchrome cold chisel. This is his story. And he says because it was a national park, uh, he confiscated the chisel. Um, but he says that the man was mentally handicapped, so they didn't take any further action. They just let him go. They just confiscated his chisel Whoa. and wait. And later he gave the chisel to the local historical society and they never saw the old man again. Now, this is the explanation. This is why they're saying these are not real. But for me, this raises more questions than where did these come from? Well, yeah, I mean, because little, <laughs> little Yugoslavian man. Mm hmm crazy chisel um when, you just happened to come across there and see it happen well and i don't know what he means because he just said he was mentally handicapped i don't know yeah, what that means i, I don't know if that i means guess that the national park service in australia 
also um, you know teaches them psychology and and <laughs> well, makes them professional so he can make that assertion. He you know. probably meant maybe he was he was just I don't know I mean you don't know what he meant maybe he thought he was slow or something but that just leaves I mean, more questions. He was I mean he was able to make pretty. So, you know. Pretty convincing glyphs that looked Egyptian and right. whatever else, and so I don't know. And the fact that he was a little Yugoslavian man, I don't wonder how he knew that. Uh, how I, do you just pick out oh, that guy's from Yugoslavia? I mean, did they have a look? I don't know. Maybe he's driving a Yugo. I don't think he was driving in the middle of the national park. He had to get there somehow. He could have got there in a Yugo, and the guy's like, "Hey, that must be a Yugoslavian." Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, you just never know. Hey, if you're the tiny Yugoslavian man with your missing chisel, uh, contact us. We know where your chisel is. Yeah, we can we can <laughs> totally get you your chisel. We will buy you here at Avon Studios in the third <laughs> side. We will purchase you a brand new shiny ch chisel if you are the small. Uh, you know, this says that he was old in 1984, so so he's really old now. That was what 30 years ago. All right, Stacy, just be negative about it. He's Yugoslavians live a long time. Anyway, I'm curious no processed food. about who this man was and what it's all from the land. What drove him to go there and chisel out these? I can tell you what didn't drive him was the Yugo. Because <laughs> those things are very unreliable. <laughs> I don't know. I mean it's a cool story. <laughs> it's a very cool story. And you know, there are glyphs found all over the place and we know that most your really close up UFO sightings mm -hmm. are always hieroglyphics mm -hmm. that are on the UFO. Right. Obviously, there's something going on there. Um, you know, ancient Egypt, pyramids of Mars. I mean, there's some yeah. connection yes. everywhere um, with the with the hieroglyphics and. Well, anyway, it's an interesting story, and so you know, if you've ever seen those, it's something I'd like to go see. I think it's a curious thing that someone did, and yeah. you know, of course, I'll probably never go to Australia. Not that I have anything against the country. I'm just scared of things, <laughs> bugs and things, saber tooth bunnies. Saber tooth bunnies yes. are the devil. So anyway, Run let's away. move on. Let's Run move away. on. Um, here's a story that, wow, I saw a million times, and I'm sure everybody's seen it. It's the one with the ghost at the police station. Yes. And this is know, making its rounds. Oh, man. Everybody has shared this story. It's been on news. I think even our local news picked it up in far local news, picks it up. You know it's around. I yeah. mean, come on. <laughs> they must not have had enough, like, church stories. To... <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Anyway, so if for some odd chance you haven't seen this or you've just forgotten about it, let us remind you. Remind us. Let us remind you. Uh, this was in Espanola, New Mexico. Very good. You're really working on that, aren't you? I'm trying. Is Okay. I'm, I'm starting to type my words out phonetically so I know how to say them when we're on the air. And where was it again? Espanola, New Mexico. All right, continue. I think I'm doing much better than last week. You're doing week great. When I couldn't even get two words out without stumbling over them. There, it was fun, though. Yes, yeah, fun for you. Okay, so police officer there is claiming that he saw something on the video cameras when right. he was monitoring. He was sitting there just sort of watching <clears throat> the surveillance cameras at the police station. Right. And he noticed something kind of curious near the gate, like a white figure. Right. And he watched it on the camera, and it kind of moved across. And he didn't know what it was at first, but after a minute when you're watching it, you can tell that it looks like someone walking. Like there's actually legs and things, you know, and moving across. And he thought, well, because at first he thought maybe it was an insect. It sounds like a Zaxby's dinner. <laughs> legs and things. It does. <laughs> he thought it was like an insect at first, right. but then he, he thought it was a person. So obviously he went out to investigate and was just blown away because the area that you see it in is not an area of somebody could walk. Right. Like there's a fence here and a fence here and, you know, there's alarms. And are you making fun of me with the No, hands? I'm just going with you. Okay. I like that you talk with your hands. And <laughs> there's no way somebody could have walked through. Right. Or probably be bright white like that cause because I don't think was... people are normally bright white when they show up on security footage. Well, so. you might be. You think? But it's a ghost. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, without it's... just going there and investigating well, I mean, and doing it. It's CCTV. Mm -hmm. It's police. So I mean, that they're, they're not really on the high list of hoaxers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I mean, it's I love it when you have these kind of cases where you've got a credible witness. Right. And because they could all just lose their job if they're faking that, you know. Well, and so you've got credible witness. 
There's okay. the cool thing is there's been my favorite part of it mm -hmm. is there's not been no deaths there. Right. That's what I was gonna say. I think on the interview when they talked to you on the video, they say that nobody's actually died there. Um, did he say that they weren't built on any kind of burial ground? They like to that make was sure. something that they really just looked into. I well, think. I mean, they wanted to make sure that people knew, hey, this is not built on a, a burial ground. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't worship Beelzebub. We don't. You know, they <laughs> they think. went through the whole laundry list <laughs> yeah, of things so. people were going to ask him. They did say there were murders that happened near there in the area. But right, the cool thing about it, credible witness. Mm -hmm. And what people don't really get sometimes is that I hate when Tom Jones, I just pulled that out of the air. Yes, so if your name is Tom Jones, he's not talking about you. We're not talking you. about you. <laughs> Tom Jones dies in a trailer. Okay? Right. So everybody that goes in that trailer mm -hmm. tries to ask for Tom Jones. Mm -hmm. You know, so one of those cops more than likely brought this activity in, or it could predate that place. It could. By a thousand years. It could. But, um, but now the guy that actually witnessed it, didn't say that he thought it was, I mean, didn't say whether or not he thought it was actually a ghost, but another officer said that he believes that it is a ghost and that uh, they, some him and some of the other officers have felt, you know, odd things there, felt weird, maybe yeah, felt breathing having... on their neck and maybe seeing strange things out of the corner of our eye. Of course, after this, I'm sure they're all going to. Well, no, I mean, they said they'd been having a lot things, of activity. Yeah, it's, before this happened, yeah. they had been experiencing strange things. It's kind of like so, doing a show at Abbott Studios. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, it is. So you just kind of expect that. So us, huh? interesting video. Definitely watch it. Um, hey, you know what we should do? What? We should go. Where's that at again? Espanola, New Mexico. We should go there. I'm just trying to make me say it. And commit a petty crime. Like something that's going to give us one night. Like I could go and act like I punched you and you could like. Yeah, I'd be like, look, my face is swollen. Yeah, use your jaw thing. And we could go in there. If they, would they put us both in jail? You have to punch me back. I'll say you ripped my hair out. Yeah. And, but we can go in there with paranormal equipment. And so you, you, you propose getting r arrested purposely. I don't condone this activity to you any know, paranormal if that happens, listening. It's Shh. not like they're going to let you take your equipment I never in said jail that. with them. I never <laughs> said that. I, I do not condone that kind of activity. No one should get themselves arrested and go in, oh, God, they're going to blame me. <sighs> but John Edwards said, you know, though, it's not like you could take your equipment with you. You know, they, This is my equipment, honey. I don't know what you're talking they, about. You said paranormal equipment. That is my equipment. Okay, well, then there's no point in me going in, is you there? You got your equipment. I got mine. Your heart. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. It okay, was. anyway. Anyway, watch the video. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit grainy. Your heart. I have a big heart. Huge heart. Yeah, okay. Huge heart. It's the, the biggest heart I've ever known. For anyone that's watching this, I am now going to kick John under the table really hard. There we go. Okay, anyway, uh, watch the video. I'm sure it's been playing in the corner. And uh, yeah, interesting. So Yeah, cool. <laughs> so we're going to move on now from the, the discussion about my heart. Um, here's a story that you really liked. Four large fireballs. I love this story. See over the this United is fire, States. This, this, this one, no quinky dinks on this. Quinky um, dinks? There's no way. Quinky so dinks. There's keywords coming out again. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love those keywords. So, um, on the night of September 23rd, there was four large fireballs that were witnessed. What were we doing on the night of the 23rd of September? Is this a quiz? Mm hmm I don't know. What day of the week is the 23rd? Well, the 23rd oh, just we happened were here. to be, yeah. We were doing a show. We were doing this a show. This is actually during the show that we during were doing. During the show we were doing, oh. and then everything went wacko after the show. Mm hmm Not that this place isn't a haunted, active location. Right. But it is. Yes. And after the show, Justin, who, you know, is our producer, director, you know, and Rick, who is our caretaker, and mm -hmm. um, we all experienced crazy, 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 crazy activity afterwards. It was just that weird feeling and kind of people looking at the sky and feeling uh, drained. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yes. Uh, tired. Um, it was just, 
It was almost, it was about as close to a negative feeling as you'll get in this place. Well, I mean, for some of us. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, it was pretty Sorry weird. about your luck on the other ones of you that's been through. But it was, uh, it was crazy. I wonder if anybody else had a weird night that night. Well, I'm just, I, that's why I mentioned it because I think it's cool that around that time. Is that the night of the new moon? Around that time, this, I think the new moon had just passed, hadn't it? Maybe. Maybe. I don't remember. I'm trying to think back now. I think it was Monday was the new moon. Well, no, you're right. It was no, Tuesday. No, because we, it was Tuesday and okay. we taped on that day. We'll continue. Okay, it was anyway. the new moon. So the first fireball was reported in Florida and Georgia. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it said that uh, over 77 witnesses from Michigan, Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New York, and Kentucky reported a second fireball later on. You know, nobody listens to one from Kentucky till all the other ones say they saw something. Yeah, I kind of listed that last. Uh, you know, that, that, at MUFON, there's probably somebody <laughs> sitting there. Kentucky's got its own phone. And <laughs> they're just like, it's ringing all the time. And they're just like... Uh, no. Nah. Okay, so nah. that was the second one. No, so I got to the- answer that one. Yeah. Oh, wait, New Hampshire called. Yeah, pick that up and let's see if they saw it too. <laughs> Just because a lot of crazy stuff happens at Kentucky, not because everybody in Kentucky. Nice save. Yeah. Well, nice save. I, you know what? Anyway. I can say that one. I've got friends that are Kentuckians. Ken- Kentuckians. That's so, right. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Well, what, else, what else would it be? I don't know. Kentuckards? <laughs> it's, it's Kentuckians. <laughs> it <makes you> sound tired. <laughs> it does. I'm Kentuckered. I'm Kentucky. Oh God! Does that mean I just married my sister? At the, uh, the to joke, the um, actually mm. most of my best friends in the paranormal are getting a good laugh right now because yeah, mo- they're laughing. That's, that's what they're doing. Because <laughs> most of you are from Kentucky, and I'm talking. I, I mean, basically the entire. Maybe we shouldn't call people out and name names. <laughs> the, entire, <laughs> the entire scare fest, the, you know, like Ooh. wow, everything. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Moving on. Second fireball. <laughs> Third fireball was seen by 29 witnesses in Tennessee, Arkansas, Alabama, Mississippi, Missouri, and again Kentucky. Kentucky yes. last. It's on listed on last, list isn't there. it? Yes. It's listed last because they don't answer the phone until the well, other ones call like in. They yeah, okay, anyway. And so I know the, what I saw. The final, the final fireball, the fourth one. It was, was huge, and it came right out of the sky. I was sitting with Luann, and uh, it, was, it was big. I know what I saw. <laughs> I'm just saying, I can say that. I'm from here. Anyway, the fourth fireball, the final one. It's sad that these other states treat us this way. It is. It's sad. I think we should stand up for southern rights. Except I don't agree with a whole lot of the Southern rights, but I think we should stand up for that fact because it's, you know, there's stereotypes and I don't like stereotypists. No, you're not a stereotypist. I'm not a stereotypist. We've established this. I'm not stereotypical at all. Continue. Can I? Please. Sure. Uh Uh-huh. All right. The fourth fireball was (laughs) reported by 42 people in Connecticut, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and Maryland. So it was like going up the eastern, you know, one, two, three, four, sort of. Yeah. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Four fireballs. And it said that three of the fireballs occurred within an hour and a half of each other. But they were all foreseen, you know, within a certain 24 hours. I mean, it wasn't like one day and next day, next day. Very close together. And I think on the article, there's actually a map, and it shows you, like, the areas where they were seen. So I thought they were pretty cool. Um, I don't think anybody's come out yet and said... I there mean, fireball is not like, <laughs> not like there is evil in this official house. explanation. Just meteors. I yeah. know that just meteors. I mean, that's just. Yeah. No, I didn't mean like that. It's I mean, four there's... fireballs so close together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and in such a specialized area. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, the East Coast, of the United States. Right. I don't know. I think there's something up with it. I think it's covering something or, or there's more to it. Mm-hmm. And if there wasn't more to it, I think. You know, you would have more scientific sites jumping all over it going, you know, ooh, this is a very cool thing, Franklin. Let's tell you, let's look at, but you're not hearing a whole lot of that. No, pretty much everybody reported it. Everybody jumped on it and reported it when it happened, but then you haven't really heard anything else about it, which is kind of the way the news works nowadays. They report something and you don't hear nothing else about it. Right. You know, unless it's a celebrity and then they won't shut up about it. They won't. So. Too bad, like, Lady Gaga didn't see it. (laughs) That would have been really cool. Okay, let's see. I think I have one more story here okay yeah let's do this one before we get to our awesome guest all right okay um you know i lived in kentucky yes i'm aware you did for a little while Mm -hmm. 
It was an interesting <laughs> It was a good, place. Little, good little stint. Mm. I witnessed mm -hmm. a, I witnessed a lot of stuff when I was up there. It was cool. Mm -hmm. I anyway. love I love the state. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's beautiful. You should really visit Kentucky. <laughs> anyway, uh, last story. This is kind of something that's been a little bit of a recurring theme for us um, since we started this show, um, where we've been talking about you know, NASA and them talking about how we're going to discover aliens in the next 20 years. 20 years. And then we talked about the Vatican and, you know, we talked about all those people and, and the aliens and discovery. Well, I found this article and I didn't actually hear a whole lot about this, but NASA has done another, like, get-together thing. And at first I thought this was the same one that we talked about before, but I'm pretty sure the date was different. And the subject was a little different. They actually brought together scientists, theologians, and, you know, a bunch of different I people. I love when you bring the theologians in. It says theologians right here in the headlines. See? It does. Theologians. I want to be the guy in charge of calling the theologians because you know anyway. they're all at the same bar, you know? <laughs> anyway, the, um, it was a two-day symposium called Preparing for Discovery. So now, instead of discussing that... Is Mitch no Kukaku there? I don't think so. But now, instead of talking about... God that they think we're going to find it in the next 20 years. Now they're talking about uh, how to prepare for the inevitable discovery of extraterrestrial life. Inevitable. And that's what it says. It says their agenda was yeah. to explore how we prepare for the inevitable discovery of extraterrestrial life, be it simple microbial organisms or intelligent beings. So they, went, they spent two days talking about the scenarios of what they would do if they discovered this that's a big, or discovered that. That's a big word. Or that sort of thing. You don't throw away. I mean, you just don't throw out inevitable. You know, that's that's pretty pretty big word just to throw out. Especially mm -hmm. as I've said before, anything with NASA, anything with our government is calculated. It mm -hmm. is severely, deadly calculated. It is, and they don't just they foreshadow like we do. I mean, right. well, maybe not as good as we do. Probably not. But everything they say is going to come up at some point, you know, and you go back and, and they can go, oh, hey, we said it was going to happen, you know, mm -hmm. and they're going to sound like a South Park character when they do it. <laughs> but. Well, one of the uh, one of the people that this article talked to, I think this was a Huffington Post article, um, was the astronomer. He was He's an astronomer, the symposium organizer, and the former chief NASA historian. His name is Stephen J. Dick. Yes, and they interviewed him. <laughs> He said that um, that the idea was not to wait until they made a discovery, but to try and prepare the public for what the implications might be when such a discovery is made. I didn't even want to tell you his name because I knew I was going to get that look. Anyway. Um, so Dick's thought on it is, mm -hmm. I mean, so he thinks it's going to be a massive event, right? So Yeah. Well, he's not sure, but they explored all the scenarios. Right. You know, if it Something was just... Something that may start small and... Right, it could be a small get bigger thing, but it could right. be a big thing. It could, it could. could well, be any size. It could be any size, really. Right. You never know. Well, anyway. any, any size is going to be good <laughs> at this point. I mean, because it's been a long time since we've had anything, and it's going to be good for everybody. Right. Uh, if we just get something. I mean, because we've been begging and begging and begging, and we've got absolutely got nothing for so long. That I think I think Dick knows what he's talking about. I think we talking about the same thing. <clears throat> aliens. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. I mean, we really want something from you. You know, all these other governments are. Out. I wasn't talking about that. It's, I was just making sure terrible. we're on the same page. You're a terrible human being. I'm not done anything. I'm, I'm listening to you talk. For so many years, mm -hmm. we have known that UFOs and aliens are real. We've we've known it. We've seen too much out there there's too much hard evidence and people they always go well there's no physical evidence there's no i mean you know what there's a lot of people out there that otherwise threw their careers away or threw their lives away mm -hmm. or lost spouses or you know were killed by some unseen force for talking and you know for all these years it's been happening 50 years you know that it's that it's been happening 60 years actually and um I think it's time that we get some sort of disclosure. We got other countries that have done disclosure, at least small parts of disclosure. Right. And I right. really think that it's time that the United States, who probably keeps the lid on the other countries anyway, or they might do not, you know, quit doing something like trade. Right. Um, I think it's time that we really just say, okay, 
Here's what we've done. Well, maybe that's what they're doing. I think maybe that's what they're, they're doing. Maybe they're just easing into yeah. it. But anyway, <laughs> I thought this was really interesting. Anyway, I thought this was really interesting. And of course, um, they said they think NASA's backing it because of all the discoveries that have been made recently with all the habitable planets right. they've been finding. I mean, they find them all the time now. Right. And of course, there was an astronomer from the Vatican, you know, that was there with his, you know, speaking and stuff. And obviously, we've talked about that. And they've come yeah. out and said, you know, any, any entity, no matter how many, you know, how weird it is or where it comes from, they has a soul and, you know, we think that they're, uh, you know, God's cool. creatures or yeah. whatever, you know. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they had another symposium, but this one had a little different theme to it. Yeah, it's very neat. Very and cool. I'd like to hear everything that I'd they like said. to hear the behind closed doors versions. Yeah, but that's you know, probably not going to happen. Like, when are we going to let them know? How, yeah. how much are we going to let them know at a time? <laughs> so as long as they don't do some false flag alien attack to... You know, wipe out maybe not first. maybe this is more of a maybe it's the nice version the nice version yeah, yeah anyway maybe it's just slowly let's see how they'll take it mm -hmm. i think that the world's ready i do i think that the world is ready and that they that everybody would handle it pretty well well you know how it is when you try to tell somebody when you want somebody to get used to something and you don't want to just slam them with it you know you talk about it like it's <laughs> You do it a little at a time, Stacy. Right. I mean, you just right. you have to have to coerce them into you know understanding this new thing. You have to do it just a little bit at a time, because if you just force it all the way right off the bat, I mean, it, you're going to blow your opportunity. And it's it's I understand. I understand what you're saying. Right. <laughs> oh, God. I think the news is over now. <laughs> well, it was great. Thank you so much. Thanks. It was a heck of an episode. I appreciate it. As we spoke about earlier, our guests today were really excited about. Uh, we had her as a guest on Haunted South mm -hmm. um, when we did that show yes. uh, about three years ago. Wow. And it's, it's been almost exactly three years. Um, Katie Boyd is a demonologist and occult scientist slash crime ex expert with over 20 years experience and study in both fields. Um, with over 30 uh, different major religious beliefs, Katie has uh, answered the call as a demonologist and occult expert who is able to recognize entities uh, from many different cultures and religious belief systems. Um, and, you know, one thing about it, it's very interesting, mm -hmm. uh, especially with, you know, like where our studio is. Right. Um, to to have her on the show, you know, because um, there's so much uh, diversity going through this place. It's, this is true. Um, Katie's aim is to empower both the afflicted and their family, um, help them come to grips with their haunting and get them uh, the help they need. Katie's a cult uh, paranormal author and lecturer residing in the state of New Hampshire, uh, but helping people all over the world with their demonic crises. Uh, she has also assisted in occult crimes cases. Um, We'll get into her information, uh, but for right now, Katie, are you there? I am here. <laughs> it's uh, really good to hear from you again. We really enjoyed uh, that show that um, we did, and it doesn't seem like it could have been three years, but it has. No. Wow. Well, thanks for having me back. Hey, no problem. Yes. The, uh, if, just give the people a little bit of idea. Obviously, I just uh, did a short book there on... Uh, on, on all the many things that you do. I know when we spoke to you last time, we went uh, to off, you know, on every topic imaginable from, uh, you know, Ouija boards and things being misunderstood. Um, right. uh, to give uh, the people a little bit of idea about, you know, what it is you do. Well, you know, the first thing is I grew up in a severe haunted house. So that kind of like already sealed, you know, my destiny to kind of work in the paranormal. But you have to remember back in the 70s, there really wasn't a lot of, you know, paranormal investigators like they are today. So my family went to the, you know, our local priest, and then he would come and actually bless the inside and outside of our house. And then as I got a little older, I got a little more interested in, you know, what is that, what's going on in my house? So... You know, obviously small town, small library, all they really had was a bunch of basic, 
you know, books on spirituality, occultism, things like that, not necessarily paranormal. So my foundation is first as an occultist. That is my foundation. And then with the things that I learned all through my life as an occultist helps being a demonologist. And then I went into the medical field and then law enforcement. So I kind of have like kind of a different background right. than your typical demonologist, you know, per se. Right. right. Um, Let's say, you know, uh, but I mean, it's very yeah, interesting I, that like the, uh, you say a severely haunted house is really what got you mm-hmm. into it. Um, the, I mean, can you go into that, Annie? Was it, I mean, was there, uh, what kind of haunting was it really? Well, um, actually, I learned a lot more information when I was writing my very first solo book, Devils and Demonology, right. in the 21st century. And I did a lot of research on the town itself in Glasstown. And Glasstown is actually, there's a lot of buildings, and the town is built on unmarked graves. Wow. And where my particular house is and where it's built, um, there was a lot of Native Americans that were slaughtered where my house was built, up on a hill. Mm. So it was, you know, the closet door at a certain time every night would open up. Somebody would walk right over to the bed, sit on the bed. And it wasn't like your typical grandfather, grandmother type of thing. Right. You know what I mean? Um, my parents argued all the time. As soon as my family stepped outside the property... It was like we're a happy family again. As soon as you step back on the property, you know, my brother would, like, try to beat me up. My parents would argue. You know what I mean? I would feel isolated, alone. Um, I mean, there was so much. Things would disappear. My father became very, very obsessed. He was a big Scottish man, and he became very, very obsessed with, you know, that particular time period with the colonials and the... Native Americans, right? It, which was really odd, you know what I mean? He was actually, like, being influenced. And, you know, so, I mean, it really did tear my family apart. And it, it was kind of weird because when I wrote Devils and Demonology, um, I found out my mother, when I was halfway through it, I found out my mother had passed. Mm. And then I was writing Haunted Closets, True Tales of the Boogeyman, which actually I go more in depth about my true story. Mm-hmm. My, I found out my father had passed, <laughs> so it's really kind of like, wow, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but, but it didn't stop me from doing what I do, and you know, so many people come to me, especially with the word demonologist, right. and they're like, you know, you're not Catholic, you can't be a demonologist, you can't do this line of work. And then I try to explain, you know, listen, not every demonologist is a Catholic. Right. And, you, you, you know, you can have occultists. The, the occultists were the first demonologists, you know, out there. I mean, I write about it. I back up with facts because you never say anything out there unless you can back it up with facts. Right. And, you know, it, it, it's not an easy, it's, it's just not easy, you know, the line of work that unfortunately <clears throat> shows me. You know, that type of thing. And that's not even my occult crimes cases, because that doesn't have to do with paranormal at all. Right. And, I mean, it's, um, <clears throat> like you said, how it chooses the person. Um, that's that's mm-hmm. one of the most interesting parts to me. And, um, you know, I'd said it before, for a long time in the, uh, I guess, the early 2000s, I thought that would be the coolest thing in the world to, uh, you know, go jump right into the darkest part of the paranormal you possibly can. And... <laughs> You know, and be be all Billy Badass and go in there and, and you know, yell and scream and everything. And uh, pretty, pretty much pre-Ghost Adventures, I was making a total butt out of myself uh, in, in many a haunted house. And I paid well, the price. And, well, yeah. You know. What's going to happen when the, the words of the Bible don't do any good? Right. You know, what if it's a hungry spirit? You know, do you know, like the certain, you know, Vietnamese or Tibetan prayers? I mean, what... what do you know what to do, you know, if the door slams behind you and, you know, or a, a fellow work, you know, crew member is, you know, pushed across the room and, I mean, you you got to know more than just the Bible. Yeah, I mean, just as a, an example, Katie, um, 
I, I was at a place, which this will be uh, more interesting in the coming weeks for, the, for our listeners, but where I kind of disrespected uh, where there's some Oni. And, um, oh, naughty. Naughty, yeah. naughty. And um, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, I had quite a experience after that. Um, right. But it's, um, so, I mean, it, like you said, it's a variety of things. And uh, mm. I've always felt personally that, it's not as much the faith behind the, it's not as much where the words come from as right. the faith you put into the words. And exactly. Um, but I, I think it's uh, amazing uh, uh, what you do uh, on the other end of the spectrum on the mm-hmm. occult uh, crimes. Uh, right. could, could you go into that a little bit? Like what, what work you've done sure. there? Sure. That, that is totally different from um, paranormal per right. se. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people do confuse that, and they think it's like paranormal, you know, where you see like some paranormal groups have like an occult division part of their group, when right. in fact they don't understand it. Now the occult crimes, you know, I'm called into because of my background as you know being in law enforcement and the medical things like that. You know, I mean it's tough. I mean, you know, you see animals you know, gutted out and on sticks and burned alive and half alive and symbols carved in them and, you know, babies, the skins and adults, you know, placed certain ways naked with carvings in them and, you know, it, 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 it really is. I mean, it all depends on the case, but, you know, I mean, it is horrifying to a regular person going into a crime scene. And seeing, okay, you know, here's, you know, you know, a kitten or, you know, a, a baby um, de-skinned and, wow. you know, still half alive. Um, what is this? But I go in and, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just nope. asking <laughs> some of that stuff that that's happening. Are you, mm-hmm. is it like some kind of tribute that they're doing or is there anything like that? Or are they just people that are just, I mean, when you say there was symbols well, and stuff. Well, yeah, there's certain symbols, things like that. Unfortunately, you have a category of different people. And unfortunately, you know, Satanists actually get blamed for, you got to say, at least 99% of occult crime cases when, in fact, it's not even Satanists. Because Satanists, true Satanists, don't harm animals and they don't harm people, actually. They really don't. And they believe that they worship themselves as gods. And, you know, Satan is just, a, or Lucifer is just kind of a focal point for them, you know, to kind of raise their power or things like that. And unfortunately, you know, I got to say, you know, they, they have gotten a really bad rap. Right. And a lot of times, you know, with the bigger, say like uh, some of the Chicago cases, um, those are people that are your neighbors, doctors, um upstanding citizens that you would never even imagine. And they're molesting and breeding babies to sacrifice children and, you know, be skinning them. And if you talk, they will partially just, you know, skin you so you don't say anything. And it is horrifying. Wow. It sounds like it is. (laughs) It is. And a a lot of the times, like the ones like, you know, we get some around here, things like that. You know, with the cold crimes, and they'll call me in and I'll, you know, evaluate and I'll be like, no, it's actually, you know, a young kid who's kind of confused on life, you know, what he what he's trying to do. And he's, you know, unfortunately mutilating animals to try to get attention. So you have to know the difference between, okay, who is this? What is this? What does the symbol mean? How is this animal placed? <coughs> you know, things like that. Right. Right. Uh, I'm curious, Katie, uh, what, when they call you in on these cases, you know, to get your opinion on them, are there certain things that they are looking for before they call you? Like, does there have to be some kind of ritual looking (laughs) thing going on before they call you? Or do they just call you if it's anything strange? Um... Well, that kind of depends, too. Um, 
because there was one in a couple of towns over from where I live, and it was really strange. Mm -hmm. um, there were some, uh, you know, first it started out with, like, squirrels um, being gutted out and burned, hung, uh, stuck on sticks, all along a dog path and where people were walking their dogs. So, obviously, right. it's not somebody who's actually a Satanist or, you know, somebody who's sacrificing animals, you know, to some god or goddess or something weird. Mm -hmm. You could tell this individual wanted the attention, wanted to get that reaction, mm -hmm. you know, because they would, it kept going to extremes. And then all of a sudden, he was hanging the animals and gutting them out and using, you know, the intestines, you know, for different ways and reasons. And so you knew, okay, okay, right away, okay, it's an, you know, younger male individual between, you know, 20, you know, early 20s to mm -hmm. early 30s, <coughs> you know, things like that. So you kind of know, but I mean, I, I, I do this stuff like in my sleep, but, you know, you kind of do know the difference between what is a wicked serious crime versus, mm -hmm. you know, an individual just trying to get attention. So let me ask you this then. Um, this goes with the occult crimes and the demonology aspect as well. Um, do you find that more often than not you run into um, uh, situations where it's not paranormal or it's not occult, it's just more of a mental illness kind of thing? Oh, indeed. Now, listen, even as a paranormal investigator, I mean, you guys know, you have to know, you got to wear many different hats. Even if you're not a demonologist, you know, you go in and you deal with people with psychological disorders, medical mm -hmm. disorders. You know, the devil's inside me. It's in my soda can. It's in my <laughs> books. It's in the TV. You know what I mean? And you have to know, okay, these are the signs of, you know, bipolar, severe bipolar. Or did you take too much of your, you know, um, insulin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you take, you know, too much over-the-counter, you know, cold medicine? You know, things like that. You have to know. I mean, that's why I always I always preach about learn just a basic medical terminology. Right. Because that way, then you can actually know the difference between, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, DID, which is, you know, multiple personality disorder, to, you know, um, uh, dissociated personality disorder, and, and all these different things that you should know, and, like, your, your basic mundane things. Right. If you go into a house, and, you know, my baby is, it, it just keeps getting infections and, and respiratory issues and all these things, but if you look up and you actually see black mold seeping through the ceilings, or in, a, in the bathroom or things like that, then you know, okay, this is black mold. Oh, okay, man. This isn't good for a baby, and it's going to give a, a baby or any child respiratory issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't agree you know? more, uh, really, with what you're saying. It's so nice to hear somebody say that. Um, years ago, um, we, you know, on, on doing paranormal investigating, um, I studied uh, neurolinguistics and took, mm -hmm. some, took something called uh, Wicklander. Um, just to, you know, to, for interviewing our subjects uh, or our, our people that call us. And, uh, you know, we've always treated cases more like cases with, uh, mm -hmm. books, times, dates, what possibly, you know, it could be. And, um, right. uh, not really like you would see on TV, but that, <laughs> that would get back to my yeah. next question. Does it drive you nuts to see, mm -hmm. uh, these shows where, you know, people just jump straight to the demon word uh, so quickly? <laughs> well, I'm just going to tell you, I've turned down a lot of shows. Okay? A lot of shows. Because I will not go on there and exploit a client. Right. I don't care what you're paying me. I don't care how much fame. I'm not in it for that. You know, I, I turn all the producers down. No. I, I don't. I it, Unfortunately, it makes it so hard for us, you know, when a client actually calls us. And you know, like verbatim, that, what movie they just watched right. or what book they just read. Or, you know, you're like, great, great, here we go, you know. 
you know, or they just watched, you know, one of the TV shows. And, you know, and I, I you know, I got a lot of friends that are on those TV shows, and I, I won't watch them. Right. And if and if anybody watches them, watch it just for entertainment reasons, because, you know, you think, you know, you know, Zach from Ghost Adventures is really cool. Or, you know what I mean? Just watch it for the entertainment purposes, any of the shows. Right. But don't really think it's like that every day. Because, you know, it's not. Right. And, and you, you get called in for cases, oh, my God, things are flying, everything's going on. And then, you know, because I work with a, a psychic medium, and she comes in and she's like, oh, honey, this is your grandmother. Right. You know, and she explains it all, and they're like, yeah, yeah, well... She's trying to get your attention, or you know, somebody used to live here. And, exactly. You know, I mean, there's so many other reasons, but people jump. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! The shows are so cool. You're my idol, and I try to be very. I don't know. I'm a very humble, down to earth kind of person. So when somebody's like, "Hey, Katie! Oh my god!" I'm like, "What?" <laughs> you know, because I'm not any better than you. Right. I just. You know, I, I happen to, you know, know a little bit more on a different subject, but I'm not better than you, you know. Well, you're and much I'm always willing to help. You're probably much more interesting than them, though. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead and say. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I'm pretty good at a party. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I don't know. I guess uh, I don't want to say jaded, but done this for so long that i i've received you know many 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 calls and, uh -huh. and it's, it's what you're saying and it's this one case and forgive me if i talked about it to you before but um, i remember this case years ago and i really try not to like pull out my own stories on these but i got to um it was supposed to be this terrible like demonic case and um, they called me in. I wasn't even going to go on this investigation, and the guys called me in, and they're like, "You got to be here. It, it's got it's got you written all over it." And I'm like, "All right." So, I go in to do an interview, and I I set up a camera just to do an interview with the lady, and yeah. I wanted to go back and study her facial responses and stuff afterwards, and um, I set up the camera and I start looking around her bedroom, and I see her bookcase, and she had been claiming sex with an incubus. And uh, which I was pretty excited about. I'll be honest with you. I mean, <laughs> if somebody's having like incubus, succubus, whatever, yeah, man, call me because I want to be there and document it. I mean, right? It's it's <laughs> you know. But I was uh, I started looking around every single book on her case. She had I'm a connoisseur of it, but she had some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen, book wise. You know, like it was three or four shelves full of I slept with a demon and uh, oh, so okay. yeah I understand what you're saying on that it's 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 definitely but you know for the real ones for the real demons that are or the real inhuman spirits that that you have dealt with um, right. do you have any long-term effects do you have uh, have you noticed them mark you or, or follow you and, and and things come up later on mm -hmm. you, you know could you talk about that a little bit or oh. is that okay yeah yeah oh absolutely you know it, it depends you know it depends what i'm writing if i'm writing a book or an article and i'm talking about an entity of any type suddenly there's like you know what i mean it, it's a little different in my house right and, and you know like somebody's watching you and it's not like a spirit you just it's a different feeling and then, because I live with a psychic medium, so, you know, she comes into a room and she's like, you do realize you're being watched, right? She calls them like little sponges. They're like these little entities. They don't do anything. They just, it's like, it's weird. It's like they kind of report what you're doing. Right. I, I don't know if anybody's ever experienced anything like that or it's just a demonologist thing. I have no idea. Or if I'm going to get a case that is like really real. I'm talking like the real shit, the real deal. Right. <laughs> okay. They'll come and they'll try to mess everything up. Like they'll try to make you not just like sick. They give you like visions. They, you know, try to like feed off your worst fears. They make you so you can't sleep. So you're cranky. So you feel like you're worthless. You, 
don't have any motivation. And then once you realize, hey, 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 what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, oh, okay, yeah. Do you identify that they, pretty quickly now? Oh, absolutely. Oh, abs- absolutely. When I know I'm like, like I said, it depends on the cases. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, you know, I have Noah's Ark at my house. You know, two cats and three dogs. Right. So, you know, it's like an alarm system. They know something's not right. And then, of course, I have a psychic, you know, that I live with. And she knows right away, um, Kate, something's not right. You right. Know? So there's like all these alarm systems in my house. <laughs> and then when it hits me, I'm like, oh, crap. Okay. Right. I will take care of this. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and then it's fine. You know what I mean? You just, you put like borders around your house and, you know, kind of protection and things like that. And as long as you don't give them that recognition, you know, and you're like, you're not going to stop me from helping this client. You can try to run me off the road. You can, you know, make my car set on fire. You can do whatever you want to do, but I'm still either going to walk to the client or I will catch a different ride. <laughs> Right. You know, but they they try to scare you. Of course they do. They try to, you know, deter you and make you just, you know, feel like you're a loser and Mm -hmm. try to mess with your head. And I've been doing this for so long that the only one that's going to mess with my head is going to be my own self. You know, if I'm just having a crappy day, it's my own doing. Just, uh, you know, I'm curious, Katie, out of all the years you've been doing this, um, in your estimation, how many times have you gone and it was a real demonic case? Because I, I wouldn't imagine that it would be an overwhelming number. No, demonic cases are actually really rare. Mm-hmm. In my whole career, what is it? It's got to be like, what, 25 something now? <clears throat> um, I would say it's seven. Mm-hmm. Seven true. You know, and I'm not talking like full possession where the person's head is spinning. You know what I'm saying? Just right you know, where there was different stages of demonic or highly negative energy in that house. Right, so right. like Absolutely. oppression. And that's, yeah, and, you know, I've been to, you know, other exorcisms and different things, because as a demonologist, you should study all the different cultures, how they do it, things like this. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, people are even handling mentally ill people and trying to do exorcisms on them. Mm-hmm. When there's not a demon inside that person, they're mentally ill. Wow. And that that's horrible. Yeah. I've seen people, you know, try to make people drink holy water. And I'm like, yeah. are you bleeping kidding me? Mm. <laughs> I, I can't even, no, I can't even be here. You're, you're disgusting to me. And yeah. I leave. I'm like, I, I don't even ask me ever to come here again. Wow. I'm out of here. Well, no, I, I think you it's know? great. I mean, I would call you first. Um, <laughs> I won't go too deep into that, but, <laughs> um, I, I would, you know, if I get, uh, something around my house that's, uh, you know, making me spit pea soup, um, I, you know, definitely I, you would be the first one that I called just from your well-rounded belief structure. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, and I it's think stuff that doesn't, it's stuff that doesn't happen overnight either. You're not like this suddenly possessed. Right. You know, spirits can do that. Spirits can possess you or influence you. So even your, you know, attitude changes. But that doesn't mean you're demonically possessed. Right. It's the mm-hmm. spirits trying to, you know, say something. Yeah, I mean, I but. completely believe. I mean, uh, I think what made me not follow what you do is because of what I was talking about at first. You know, we I went through five mm-hmm. years of hell. And um, mm-hmm. it's... Uh, our family, uh, you know, we, we nearly, we came right to the cliff of losing everything, losing our complete right. family. And we actually lost that house. Um, um, the house yeah. that everything really happened in. And, you know, the creepiest words we've ever heard was when we were leaving and our, our little two year old daughter at the time or three year old daughter at the time, um, we were leaving the house and we had the truck loaded up like you would see on a movie. The house was completely white. And she, yeah. we were in the truck and she turns to her mama and she said, I never want to go back to the black house. Wow. And, you know, it was that just chilled our bones because we knew everything that happened there and stuff you don't see every day, um, you know, like oh, physical course. manipulation, you know. And um, mm-hmm. but when we got out of there, 
it completely was a lifted, you know, there was this, this weight lifted off the family, mm -hmm. but the well, fam yeah. family's still not completely it's like, recovered. It's like you said with your family when you were younger, you know, you're different, you were yeah. different in the house than you were away from the house. Exactly. So oh, it was, oh, ex oh, exactly. And, yeah. you know, my parents divorced, you know, a little bit what, when I was 16. Mm -hmm. And when my father moved out, he was a total different guy, totally different. And my mom stayed there for another five years, and it was like she went insane. Wow. Even, you know, but she died of Alzheimer's, but <clears throat> she died very quickly after she moved out of that house. I mean, really. You don't still was, own that house, do you? I, I don't. My mother sold it, actually, to this really weird couple. <laughs> and I don't mean, uh, maybe they're not really weird, but they seem a little off. Right. And that's okay. But they... I did. I do notice because you know I don't live that far away, mm -hmm. and um, every once in a while I'll drive by, and they actually keep having trucks of sand of like soil come, mm -hmm. and they keep adding it on and on and on in the backyard, you know, because obviously there's you can tell obviously they're having issues of duh. That's all. <laughs> so I think they think by adding more and more soil. I mean, the yard is like taller than like your house, you know, you're like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Oh my God. <laughs> that is a bit and odd. adding it. Yeah, it's really odd. And it, yeah, and it's like, well, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I could ever actually walk in there only because of the memories of my family, but, you know, to kick, you know, some entity's ass, I sh sure, <laughs> but yeah, that's, well, yeah. Katie, uh, honestly, it's, um, I, I, you know, I invite every one of our listeners um, out there um, or people watching on YouTube that are brave enough to look at our ugly faces. Um, <laughs> the, uh, oh, you guys are cute. <laughs> You're not ugly. Get it out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, uh, you know, we invite everyone to, it sounds really cool, like, to go through your, your books because you get the full experience. You can get that full story. Uh, right. you know, where you go back and, and then talk about, you know, more of your personal story. Um, I, I, I think it's great. And, um, uh, it's katieboy.net. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but the ghostquest.org. Yes, ghostquest.org. Okay. Yep. And tena uh, tenacityradio.com. And yep, we'll that's, go ahead. Yep. yep. No, that's a radio network that, uh, Becca Boyd and I own. All right. And, yep. At, on Twitter, which we love to, uh, we're, we're serial tweetist. So, um, <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> at, at NH Demonologist, common spelling. Yeah. And right now, for all you YouTube watchers um, watching our show, uh, obviously Justin is putting this all over the place on the screen. So Aww. he's he's listed the books. He's put up pictures Aww. and he's oh, websites. Um, tell me, um, why don't you explain just real quick? Go ahead and push your websites a little bit. What what is the ghostquest.org and the Tenacity Radio? Well, uh, the ghostquest.org, that was something, oh God, in like 1999, um, Becca, who's a psychic medium, we built Ghost Quest. It was a paranormal group that we had, and we just had so much on our website, we decided to just, you know, it was getting too bogged down, so we kind of broke it down, and, you know, um, we've been on a hiatus, because we do a Ghost Quest radio show, mm -hmm. and we actually talk about subjects that are controversial, and, you know... Hey, we, we say it like it is. Um, so right there, it just kind of explains more about who I am and, you know, who Becca is and what we do. Right. For the Ghost, for the ghost Quest. And Tenacity Radio is, you know, where you can tune in and, you know, hear some shows and, you know, music shows, paranormal shows. Right. You know, one of those. Very cool. One is of there those networks. <laughs> is huh? there anything else you'd like to shield? That's what before we, because I, I usually give people the opportunity to, uh, you know, anything else you'd like us to mention before uh, closing it out mm -hmm. here. No, you guys really seem to cover a lot, <laughs> and and just you know, a lot of people, you know, it's it's okay if you read one of my books and you may not agree with something that I say or what I do. Mm -hmm. It, as long as you walk away with knowing something you haven't learned before, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I care about, the educational part of it. Right. Right. That's my big thing. Well, definitely. The way you've come, I yeah. mean, you know, you got it honest. And um, that's that's always my favorite people to talk to is the people that <laughs> um, 
have really got into it because of it's a calling, because of something that's happened to them personally, not because they were sitting around eating Cheetos and thought it would be cool to, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> go, go follow that. And plus you're educated, which, mm-hmm. yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and we, well, you know, we, we say stuff too that, that <laughs> they have to put the disclaimer at the bottom of, of, uh, of, the, of, YouTube, of yeah. the show a few times, but you know, <laughs> It is what it is, and, and we think you're pretty awesome, Katie. So thank you so much for coming on the show with thank us. Thank you. Um, and we will uh, hopefully be speaking to you very soon. Okay, and no more three years, okay? I promise. <laughs> no more three years. I promise. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Katie. Okay. You Bye, guys Katie. are awesome. Thank you. Bye. And that Bye. was and that was Katie Boyd. Um, KatieBoyd.net mm-hmm. is going to be the, the way there. Um well, that was weird. Did yeah, you hear that? Um, weird sound. I don't know. Ghostquest.org, anyway. mm-hmm. tenacityradio.com, mm-hmm. shifferbooks.com. And obviously, this is going to have to be spelling up there because I could say common yeah. spelling on Go Shiffer to Books. Amazon. I think they sell them on Amazon. And also, for, so. you, for you fellow tweetists, at NH, which would be New Hampshire. You couldn't tell with the accent there, could you? No, not at all. She sounded like talking to your family. <laughs> <laughs> I tell I th- you, anybody that just that says wicked that much, it's a dead giveaway. I love, I love the, that. I love it too. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. That's wicked I cool. Miss that. I that. I don't talk to my family enough. I don't hear I know, it. I know it's because they're wicked crazy, <laughs> and I don't. We can't talk to them. I'm just anyway. playing to to members of Stacy's family <laughs> that are currently watching our show. I want to apologize for all this evil craziness she's pulled me into. And, and I love each and one, every one of you. I'm just playing. Uh, the Twitter is at NH Demonologist. So thanks very much to Katie. And we're going to have to yes. reach out to Katie yes. ourselves because I think it's a reason that we interviewed her today. I think she'll be a perfect fit for something that um, it just it just seems right about something. So I think we're going to be, you might be hearing about Katie uh, very soon on some other projects coming from the studio. We'll talk, you know. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. <laughs> and once again, we'd like to thank Katie Boyd for uh, joining us on the show today. She's always so interesting. Yes, And very we are definitely going to have to have her back yes. very soon. Yes, we'll talk to her again. Um, and katieboyd.net, ghostquest.org, uh, tenacityradio.com, shifferbooks.com, uh, and on Twitter at NH Demonologist. Yes. So that's the ways to get a hold of her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we had a wonderful new segment today and and you had some really cool stories the four fireballs that's some awesome stuff i knew that was your favorite story i I mean it's just it's more than coincidence you know i'd like um, to see what happens tonight when we're all together like i really really tried to find an orangutan story for you you know i love you we talked about that on that one i know i love you for that and i looked and i looked and they're just it's hard it's hard to find one no paranormal orangutans no, but I was just going to find an interesting story. Anything, not yeah. even paranormal. Well, I mean, I'd like to have like either an orangutan that got abducted by aliens, right? Um, and you know, or some kind of paranormal. God, can you imagine a possessed orangutan? No, that would be terrible, would be ter- horrifying. Anyway, you know, we've got friends that make indie movies. <laughs> Is that your idea? Oh my God, can I you imagine? We'll find a story for you though. The X ray ape. It's, I don't know. That's not very good. We'll, we'll think about that. Facebook.com slash third side. That's one of the best ways to get a hold of us and keep up with us. Also at three side para. If you follow our Twitter, you're going to get all kinds of cool, wacky stories all the time. Mm-hmm. Stacy tweets a lot. I tweet a lot. Justin tweets a lot. And we're all under that same banner there because, uh, you know, that's just the way we do it. That's the way we roll. Um, <laughs> under the same banner. Under the same banner. ThirdSideParanormal.com. ThirdSideParanormal.com. That's all written out. There's no numbers. It's easy to learn and remember and put in your favorites. And it's also easy to go to that Facebook and hit the like button. It's also mm-hmm. easy to share that YouTube video that you're watching right now. Yes, share. We share. want shares and likes. Yes, definitely. Actually, the Facebook crowd has stepped up this last they week. Have. We've gotten a lot of new likes. Mm-hmm. You know, the word's getting out. So it's, The word's getting out. And you know what? We love each and every one of you guys. We absolutely do, and we love doing this, and we love uh, interacting with you, uh, mm-hmm. sending us, you know, messages and and yeah, and and that we've had people come on our page and you know like it and say, hey, can you give us a like? And you know what, we do that. We like everything absolutely. people send us. So, you know, if you follow us on Twitter, I'll follow you back. Right, Abs- you know? absolutely. We, uh, you know, we're all about promoting uh, other teams, uh, other people out there. Even if you got a show, I mean, we'd be 
love to promote it for you uh, because it's what this is all about you know we're all doing the same thing none of us are making a fortune at this we do it because we love it because it's passion and you know it needs to be done and uh, mm -hmm. we really appreciate the audience growing like you have and I hope you stick around with us you know I hope that you uh, enjoy it and you tell a friend and if you don't like it tell an enemy for my lovely wife Stacy my name's John so long from the third side good night